So now you're seeing that we can sequence things differently, we can start at different doses. So how do we make that decision? So I'm gonna give you guys a patient case, mm -hmm. okay, and see what you would do. So, John, yep. 65 year old woman, she has a performance status of one, more from anorexia, mm. a little bit of fatigue, mm. sort of that pancreatic cancer patient that's starting to feel the symptoms. What would you use? First you know, so I, you know, as, every, as we're sitting here talking about this, I know that almost every time I'm sitting here in this clinic room thinking, what should I do? Because they'll do whatever I say. Um, and if I pitch sort of the three drug combo or the two drug combo, um, that's what they'll end up doing, right? And so this really is one of those moments when, yeah, you can paint the two and let them choose. I mean, yeah, there'll be some toxicities that come out. Um, but in the end, they'll say, well, what do you think I should do? And, and I wish I knew. I mean, sometimes it's, um, and my experience with this is, is, you know, that some people respond to one and not the other and vice versa. So you'll get really good responses with one and, and not the other. So um, I, I tend to be a two drug regimen guy. I mean, I, I don't see the added advantage of what may be real small increase in response rate, for example, compared to the toxicity. So I realize that as an academic oncologist in a big city, I'm supposed to be a three drug guy and push these people. Um, and I, I, but I just don't, maybe it's my age, but I f that feels sort of like I'm being mean, quite honestly. So there's that part of me that tips the balance and so often, even in a relatively young, decent PS patient, I'm probably still starting with Jim uh, nab paclitaxel. Now three weeks on, one week off, or every other? So I actually do it a little different, but I would start with three <laughs> on. Who oh, well, no. <laughs> Anyway, we, I, I usually go three on, one off. Um, I have a patient right now that yesterday got the text that th on week three was too low, mm -hmm. so I didn't treat. So I'll pr either go to every other or two on, one off, depending on where we are. So um, it's rare, quite honestly, that I can get three in a row in most patients. All right, heterogeneity of opinion. George, what would you do for this patient? Um, I think Abraxane gem is very reasonable. I think Fulfirinox modified is reasonable, so I would do both. I agree with John, believe it or not, that Abraxane <laughs> gem would be very reasonable for this patient. Uh, I don't know, would you change it if it was a, a male patient? No, I know I, I've asked Eileen this question before. No, I, no you do the same thing. I, I, I like men equally as I like women. <laughs> now, oh, and now, are you going to every other week um, MD Anderson high dose everything them, or are you going to do a traditional three on one off? Traditional three on one off, and if I do run into trouble, I'll do what John did: uh, two weeks yeah. on, one week off, two uh, two out of three. So yeah. Kayo, I, I'm the same way, and I tend to favor um, the gem nabipaclitaxel because of the sequence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, now we have second line therapy that is actually um, FDA approved and based on randomized phase three data. It's been a, a long journey. You know, we all felt that, that for selected patients, there was a role for second line therapy in pancreatic cancer, but that proof of principle was kind of lagging behind, and now we have that. And since one of, you know, two of the components of uh, uh, Fofirinox is part of the second line um, treatment in pancreatic cancer, that, you know, is also a contributing factor to select the gem nabipaclitaxel as first line. But I think the main reason is, I think, as Dr. Marshall just mentioned, is that you know, this is palliative treatment. We are not in the curative setting, and giving three cytotoxic drugs up front is very challenging. Eileen? So I like both. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pick one. Yes, I know. <laughs> well, so we're a little biased because we have a lot of gemcitabine nab paclitaxel based studies. Mm -hmm. So we probably actually use mostly gemcitabine nab paclitaxel because it is, it's a nice building block for, for adding agents. Outside of a study, it's, it's probably, I'd say, about 50-50. And, you know, like our colleagues here on, on the panel, a lot of people come having read that one is better than the other or better fit for them. Uh, but I really like them both and use them both. Uh, but I do think the point that uh, Kiara made is that we now have the option of sequencing mm -hmm. and potentially a third line if one starts with gemcitabine and apaclitaxel, mm -hmm. that, that may be um, influencing the decision a bit in terms of in encouraging more people in that direction and just thinking not for the next five minutes, but how we can strategize to get the most mileage uh, from all the tools uh, available over time. You know, when I started in on this, um, I really thought it was the oxaloplatin and the mm -hmm. arenatecan was kind of along for the ride. 
And now that, I don't know if you guys think the same way, but now that we have second line negative study with Folfox, um, uh, I'm wondering Bunker if it's ox. really the Irinatecan. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, you know, in the three drug cocktail, is there magic among the three drugs? Um, or is it really just fluoropyrimidine or Irinatecan that's carrying the day? Um, and so uh, some of that influences my decisions. I'm less excited about oxaloplatin in this drug than I used to be. Um, and so I think that's changed some of my practice. So is there anybody in first-line metastatic setting that you could think of what, is there any patient profile you could think of where you would use full fear and ox first line? Uh, I'm yes. sorry. Okay. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say that. So, so that's exactly right. I mean, I think if one is thinking that the patient has, a, has either a known uh, BRCA mutation or a high probability, I think having the DA, DNA damaging agents with uh, oxaliplatin and with irinotecan is potentially attractive, and that would sway. All right, so which one is it? Is, is it the oxali or the arenatecan that's best for I, the bracket? I think it, neither I think of those is the best. I think yeah. cisplatin is probably yeah. the yeah. best drug, yeah. but yeah. the combination is good. And well, and they're both being tested with PARPs, too, so yeah. uh, and yeah. it seems to be active. So I want to bring up something John just said, IROX. Hmm. Not that I rock, but <laughs> IROX. Remember that regimen? <laughs> Remember that? Remember that? Yeah. That's a good oh, regimen. Yeah. There is an interaction between arenatecan and oxaliplatin. Yeah. I think we forget about the interactions. Mm -hmm. We forget that oxaliplatin almost died when it was used as monotherapy, and it was only when the French combined with 5-FU that they really showed that it, and then Rich Goldberg brought it to U U.S. soil, and he finally showed that it worked in colorectal cancer. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's an interaction between you know, all three drugs. So. I mean, I'll, I, there's a, a, patient, a young patient, I would say under 60, with a lot of tumor burden, um, you know, who really needs a response, I'd probably give them a couple cycles uh, of fulfirinox um, and see what I can get out of that. Um, I would bring that bias to the table. Of e even if there is some truth to the higher response rate, I want every angle I can get in that patient where I need a response. Right up front.